Hey guys, welcome to another video review. And today, as you can see behind me, I have a bike. This is the Hecto by Schindelhauer, a German company. And I've been riding this bike for the past month, I would say. I did uh, many years ago, I think it was about 2016 or so, when I started the website and I didn't have a YouTube channel. I did review the first version of the Hector and I thought it would be cool to do a video review this time. And so it happened that it was about the same time where they were releasing the new version. This is the third version of the Hector. The one you're seeing right now is a prototype, it's not even the production bike yet. So by the time you see this video, the production bike will be available on the website for sale. But I wanted to give you my opinion. So in case you're looking at the bike and you want to have a bit of a feedback, a review, this was my experience riding the bike for the past month. When they sent the bike to me, the bike came already built with the single speed free wheel cog on it and the brakes and everything. And I rode with that for about two weeks. Riding free wheel with this bike, it's super easy it's very nice ride then i took the brakes out at the time they sent me also the fixed gear wheel so another wheel with a different cog a different hub for fixed gear i just changed that out i took the brakes from the bike and i rode another two weeks with it as a fixed gear and i want to give you my opinion on that from the first version of the Hector to the third version uh, to the second version there was actually there were a lot of changes on the frame and geometry uh, it uh, from the first to the second they changed from the straight head tube to a tapered uh, head tube tapered fork which is not only becoming standards on every bike but it's a much better for strength and stability with a head tube like that very cool uh, you will see top tube has a different geometry a bit of like a squared shape uh, geometry where the down tube uh, became this bigger oversize for increased strength the hector is a true track bike it's it was built and developed mainly with crete races in mind this bike has been developed with the help of Schindelhauer racing team, the Schindelhauer Gates. He has one of the highest bottom bracket uh, I measured and this is a 30 centimeters high bottom bracket which gives a lot of clearance for the crits but also if you're riding in the street you also want to have clearance so you can uh, ride as aggressive as you want. Um, that's a very, very cool feature of this bike geometry. I really like that. In the bottom bracket, there was also added a plate to increase and even add more stiffness to the rear part of the bike. So a bit more about the, the biggest difference from the second version to the third version. The geometry stayed the same. That's pretty much tuned already. What they changed was the cable routing, the internal cable routing that goes under the top tube. So if you do want to ride single speed, you can have a still quite of a clean look bike. Also something new to the third generation is the new colorways. You can see here I have these, they call the <coughs> Garnet Red color and there's also the Graphite Black. I think this is really cool. I wish it was a bit more of a impact color. It's a very beautiful, very elegant red. But I sometimes I feel that the fixed gear could have a bit of more of a splash. When I rode the Hector the first time, it was a very cool bright blue. I've seen online some bright orange and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, it looks beautiful, especially how it was built so it was sent to me with uh, the single speed built so 
I'll start with uh, how the bike was configured. You can see starting in the front in the cockpit, it's a 70 centimeter straight bar from light skin. It had uh, Treco brakes, their own Schindelhauer stem, the integrated headset is a Tange Saiki. In the back, fabric scoop um, saddle. The seat post also from light skin with integrated light. And then we have, of course, the carbon belt drive system. The drop rod looks really beautiful. Another very cool stuff on the dropout is the Cro uh, the Crocodile T style dropout that Shindahao developed as well as a wheel tensioner. So there is no screw going on the dropout, pulling the wheel out. It's very nice, super cool and clean. Again, making the bike look even more stylish. And as you can see, my belt, it's tight from day one, never moved, never slipped. It's really, really cool. Another great thing that I loved about the design of the Hector and how Shindahawa did is the place where you actually have a, you break the frame in order if you want to take the belt. Once you do finally need to change a belt, it's hidden inside the dropout on the drive side and you don't see at all because I've seen so many bikes where there's a cutout somewhere in on the, on the city stay which is not so cool it doesn't look so clean the bike it's super light as well i weighed it i cannot remember because i weighed it the very first day i had it but i'm gonna cut the image so you can see it's a very light bike very light system the belt is quite light as well so it doesn't add a lot of weight to the bike or anything especially these full carbon fork and if you want to build it with your own components carbon handlebar carbon stem carbon seat post carbon wheels it can get even lighter the only downside that i see uh, if you do decide to get a hector is if you do decide to change to the belt system you already have your bikes with chains, your cogs and everything. You're gonna have to acquire on the long run a lot of a lot of stuff again. All the cog size that you would need, all the chain ring sizes that you need, and the tools because also use special tools to tighten the cog. So this is the real only downside to it, but I think. If you buy a bike like this, you already have a set. Unless you are racing a lot and you need to be changing that all the time, the setup you have is gonna be good. And with time, then you can add one cog, you can add uh, some stuff like that. But this is honestly the only downside. But the greatest thing is if you, after riding with the belt, don't like the system, you can just go back to normally riding with all your components, you can just build it with a chain, with everything that you had, and you still have a very awesome, very good looking, great quality built frame, smooth welds everywhere. One of my favorite things is the integrated uh, seat clamp. It looks beautiful. I just like that style. I think it fits the bike so nicely. I love the cut for the wheel gives even a shorter wheelbase again for that ride styling that I, I really like so i think this is a very very cool bike from what i understood Schindelhauer is only selling as a complete bike they are not going to be selling the frame set alone so it is kind of an investment to make but if it's going to be your first bike or you've been looking for it, personally, I think it's an awesome bike. I'm very sad to return it and um, hopefully in the future I get to ride with it again. Maybe then 
the production even though there's very little difference from this prototype to the production but i'll really be looking forward to ride it again so i hope you guys enjoy i hope i could show you as much as possible of the bike so if you're thinking of getting i hope this video helped you uh, personally i loved riding this bike and i'll see you guys on the next one